Hi, I'm Denise and you're watching Law with Denise. In this video, we're going to be exploring the following four questions. We're asking, who is a rescuer? Secondly, we're asking, is a rescuer a primary or a secondary victim? Thirdly, we're asking, can a rescuer recover damages for pure psychiatric harm? And then our fourth question is, did the House of Lords overrule Chadwick and British Railways Board 1967 in their decision reached in White and Chief Council of South Yorkshire, 1999. So who is a rescuer? Let's put this into context. When we talk about a rescuer, we're talking about scenarios in which a dangerous event has occurred, a disaster, and then someone has gone out and helped victims of that disaster. Now, usually when people go out and help others in a disaster, nothing is heard of it. There isn't a case that turns up in court, is there? But when we look at rescuer cases, we're talking about scenarios in which a disaster has occurred as a result of someone else's negligence and another person has gone out and rescued victims and then that person realizes that they have suffered injuries as a result of what they did to help others. And then that person may decide to start a case against the person or body that initially created that disaster negligently. That's what we're dealing with here. So we look at Chadwick and British Railways Board and McFarlane and EE Caledonia and White and Chief Council of South Yorkshire 1999, you'll see that that's the type of issue that's being dealt with. For example, in Chadwick and British Railways Board, we see that it was the British Railways Board which created a disaster through their negligence and Mr. Chadwick went out and rescued others. And as a result, he developed injuries, which he then claimed for in court from the British Railways Board. So that's the type of scenario we're looking at. That's the context. Now, a person can claim that they're a rescuer, but what makes the court decide or agree with them that they are a rescuer? Because the court has to agree with the person in order for them to decide, okay, you can possibly get damages. What the court does is the court itself would look at the facts of the case and decide if that person is a rescuer. And what was made clear in McFarlane and EE Caledonia is that peripheral acts of assistance will not be enough for the courts to recognize you as a rescuer. If you want to find out the details of that case, I do have a video with a case summary of it. You can follow the link in the description to watch it. So to establish if you're a rescuer, the court is going to look at the facts. They, they won't be satisfied if it's just what they class as peripheral or superficial acts of assistance that you've given. They will want to know or be convinced that it was reasonably foreseeable that you would suffer physical injury as well in order for them to be convinced that you are a rescuer. So that's our first question. Now, our second question is, is a rescuer seen as a primary or secondary victim? And the short answer is that a rescuer is put in the category of a primary victim. And that's important for a claimant making a claim as a um, rescuer because it means that the claimant knows they do not need to pass through the three control mechanisms outlined in Alcock and Chief Council of South Yorkshire for secondary victims. For case summary of Alcock and Chief Council of South Yorkshire, follow the link in the description. So to make clear, a rescuer is a primary victim. Third question, can a rescuer recover damages for pure psychiatric harm? Yes. In Chadwick and British Railways Board 1967, it was made clear that it is possible for a claimant or plaintiff to recover damages for pure psychiatric harm. So that means it's not just if you've suffered from physical harm, you've hurt yourself physically, if you have psychiatric injury as a result of your involvement in rescuing others in a disaster, it is possible to recover damages. Chadwick and British Railways Board 1967. For a case summary, follow the link in the description. Now, let us look at our fourth question. Our fourth question was, did the House of Lords overrule Chadwick and British Railways Board 1967 when they reached a decision in White and Chief Council of South Yorkshire 1999? 
Now, so to answer this question, you're going to need to have a good understanding of these two concepts that are used in common law, overruling and distinguishing. I have two videos which explain the two concepts and the links to these videos are in the description. What you can do is pause this video and go and watch those two so that you're clear on what I'm talking about and then come back to this video so that you can understand the answer to question four. So welcome back if you paused and, and left and happy to have you here if you didn't. <laughs> now, what is our answer to question four? Simply, it is no. The House of Lords did not overrule Chadwick and British Railways Board 1967 when they reached a decision in White and Chief Council of South Yorkshire 1999. In White and Chief Council of South Yorkshire 1999, the claimants were not given, were not recognized as rescuers because the Lords said it was not reasonably foreseeable that they would have suffered physical injury. They distinguished this case from Chadwick and British Railways Board by saying that if we look at Chadwick and British Railways Board, it was reasonably foreseeable that Mr. Chadwick could have suffered physical injury. And because they could not see that this was reasonably foreseeable with White and Chief Council of South Yorkshire 1999, they distinguish between the two, but they made it clear that Chadwick and British and Railways Board 1967 is still good law. So it is still possible for one to recover damages for pure psychiatric harm as a rescuer. But before a person claiming to be a rescuer can do so, the court needs to be convinced that it was reasonably foreseeable that they would have suffered or they could have suffered physical injury. If they can see that it was reasonably foreseeable that this person could have suffered physical injury, they can recover damages for pure psychiatric harm. So they can still recover damages only for psychiatric harm, but they need to demonstrate that even though you didn't suffer physical injury, it was still reasonably foreseeable that you could have. So I hope that was useful. And until next time, thank you. Bye-bye.